Uh, I will begin with a word of prayer. So. Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for this day. I thank you for the students. Just ask you to bless our work today as we try to understand a little bit about polar coordinates. Lord, in your name I pray. Amen. All right, so I'm going to talk more about graphing... So I did something, I did something last class and you guys asked me like, what, 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 what did you do? How, how did you do that? What are those graphs that you're drawing? So I think we should go back through that again. This is the method, <clears throat> so I want to talk about the method for plotting a polar, polar graph. What's a polar graph? So this is r equals to some function of theta is what that looks like, OK? Now, r equals to, that's what a polar graph is. Now, I, I think in terms, of things, in terms of things you already know, all right, what a polar graph really is is a parameterized curve. We could look at it that way. See, this is essentially a a path or parameterized curve with t equals to theta where x equals to r cosine theta and y equals to r sine theta. All right. So technically speaking, you know, we're looking at the path r of t equals to what? f of t um, cosine t, f of t sine t, right? But in this part of the course, we, we always use, we, use, we don't put t, we put theta, all right? Um, so, <clears throat> I'll get back to the method for plotting, but it, since I've said this much, we might as well figure out how to calculate the slope of a polar graph, right? How would you calculate the slope of a polar graph? So I'll get back to this. But first, so what was, what was, the, what was the, how did we calculate the slope if we want to calculate the dy dx at theta, right? Because I could just erase t in here and put theta, right? You're like, I'm taking notes in pen. <laughs> well, that's your problem. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Now, um, this would be equal to what? This would be equal to dy d theta, right? Divided by what? dx d theta, right? As long as we're at such a point where that makes sense. And um, what, is that, what does that work out to here? What's, well, y is f you know, f times f of theta times the sine of theta. And what's, uh, what's x? Oops. f of theta cosine theta, right? So if we wanted to calculate the slope of a polar curve, it's, it's kind, of, kind of funny. Um, I mean, we could do the chain rule here and figure out a formula for it, I guess, but... What would that be? That would be df d theta, um, df d theta, bit, 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 sine theta, plus f cosine theta divided by df d theta cosine theta minus f sine theta, right? Or 
you could put f equals to, or if we, if we set f equals to r, which is probably what you'd see in a textbook, right? This is dr d theta sine theta um, plus r cosine theta divided by dr d theta cosine theta minus r sine theta. So that, that would be a, a formula for the slope of r equals to f of theta at, you know, r cosine theta, r sine theta. I'll get out of the way here in a second. Let me, let me give you an example. Yeah. <clears throat> I can, I, can, I, can, I can sound like Popeye. Example one. Let's see here. Let me. Oh. All right. I'm trying to do something interesting. I, I may be. All right. This 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 example is going to cost us some. It's going to cost us some effort here. So we're going to look at. R sine theta equals to R cosine theta um, plus. I guess we can just do that. That'll keep it relatively easy. If I do that, right? So I'm gonna, I want to find um, f of theta such that the above is polar graph. Oh, I can't do that, can I? Son of a gun. Oh, well. I'll do this squared then. And then calculate um, slope of graph. And then after all that, we're going to see if we can interpret what that, if that makes sense in terms of things we already know from Calc 1 and so forth, all right? So what, how do we find the polar graph? Well, that, that just means solve for r, all right? Finding the polar graph from something you're given, you can just reinterpret that as solving for r. Solve given object or equation for, for r, all right? All right, so we've got r sine theta equals to r squared cosine squared theta, right? So to solve for r, I, I've got r equals to what? r sine theta divided by r cosine squared theta. Of course, the r's cancel. We get what? Sine theta over cosine squared theta? Would you like to rewrite that? Looks like we've got tangent theta, secant theta, right? r equals to tangent theta, secant theta. So there you go. There's, or, or you could, of course, write sine over cosine squared theta. So r equals to tangent theta, secant theta is the polar graph, that's a polar graph, which is equivalent to the given curve, all right? Any question? Or, no? Okay. Now, so to find slope, dy dx at, at theta, <coughs> uh-oh. <laughs> we don't want that. Uh, let's see here. So I'm supposed to do what? DRD theta. What's DRD theta? I'll, I'll write it down here. DRD theta sine theta plus R cosine theta divided by bit, 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 DRD theta cosine theta minus R sine theta. So how's that work out? What's DRD theta? Oh. Unpleasant, isn't it? So it looks like you got yourself a secant cubed theta um, plus um, 
secant squared theta tangent cubed theta, I think, times sine theta, um, plus tangent theta, secant theta, cosine theta, divided by secant cubed theta plus secant squared theta tangent cubed theta. I'm getting that from the product rule of tangent times secant, okay guys? Cosine theta minus tangent theta, secant theta, sine theta. Yowzers. Yep. Oh no. <laughs> why are you doing that? Um, you're using the x and y and the Is there a reason why you're keeping two y and the x and y together the variable? Oh, because, do you, because we're still thinking at the end of the day, you know, the polar graph, I mean, I don't know what it looks like. It could be all kinds of crazy stuff, right? But if I take this point right here, and then I want to say, what's the tangent line to that? you know, to that point, it should still be the case that the tangent line to that, if I rewrite this curve in terms of the y and the x, which are still available, right, we have x and y and r and theta for this given plane. These are two different sets of coordinates. They're related, but not the same. And so <clears throat> I should be able to find at that point that the slope to the tangent line m is dy dx, dy dx at, you know, at theta naught where, you know, that's theta naught for this curve. <coughs> the thing that's a little bit subtle, among other things, is that choice of theta naught. You know, if this, if this ray is at pi over 4, right, that doesn't mean that theta naught is at pi over 4. It's a parametric kind of thing. You've got to kind of follow the curve and see what angle you actually land on when you get there. So it might be that, or maybe this is pi over 4. This is pi over 4 plus 2 pi. This is pi over 4 plus 4 pi for my picture. So I've, I've taken your question and replaced it with another common confusion. I hope that's OK. Um, <clears throat> this is a confusion I fall prey to, though, um, not choosing the right theta knot later on. Don't worry, we'll forget about it, and it'll come back and haunt us when we least expect it. Um, <clears throat> can you simplify this? First of all, did I calculate the derivative right before we invest any energy in this? Does everyone agree with my derivative of secant cubed plus secant squared tangent cubed? You guys got that too? Okay. So dr d theta is d d theta tangent secant theta plus tangent theta d d theta secant theta. Oh, no, I don't believe it. So actually, I think the first one's right, but the second one <coughs> is based on a faulty assumption that the derivative of secant is secant squared tangent squared, which is just nonsense. That's supposed to be what? <coughs> Excuse me. Secant theta tangent squared. Ay, ay, ay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, cosine and secant cancels, right? I'm just going to focus on the denominator. The denominator, you notice this cosine theta cancels the, right, this cancels against that, and, and this, in a sense, it, this becomes secant squared, right? So we get secant squared theta plus tangent squared theta. <coughs> Excuse me. I already multiplied the cosine theta through. And then minus, what's, what's this simplify to? <coughs> what's that? Oh, that's a tangent squared. Oh, well, that's kind of nice. So apparently, we're just looking at 1 over secant squared theta times the numerator, 
right? I think this is one of those calculations that you guys can do way faster on your paper than I can do on the board. I, I, I went ahead and canceled the uh, secant cosine pair over here. Yeah. So what happens now? <clears throat> We get two um, tangent theta, secant theta, cosine theta, yeah? I mean, it's obvious, right? That's a joke. It's not obvious why that step would be true. In fact, I think this more naturally simplifies to tangent, to, to tangent theta. So this one, if we factor out a secant, if we factor out a secant here, you've got secant squared plus tangent squared theta, right? So this term drops down to what? That drops down to just sine theta, I believe. Well, sine theta, secant theta. <sighs> Sorry, I'm spending entirely too much time on this example. But I, I, I do think that the things we're doing right now are healthy. Um, even if I'm not, let's see here, secant squared theta. So like I said, factor out a secant theta. That gives us secant squared theta plus tangent squared theta plus um, times sine theta, plus tangent theta, I think. Secant squared plus tangent squared is 1. What's secant sine? That's tangent theta. Right? So, looks like we've got tangent theta, well, two tangent theta actually, right? Divided by secant squared theta. I wasn't expecting that secant squared theta. What's up with that? Huh. Oh. How did I get that secant squared theta? Is that legit? Did I make a mistake there? Yes, yeah, so he said secant sine is tangent, so that's minus tangent squared. Ah. Start over, <laughs> you monster. Well, it seems to be what we got. Fine. <laughs> Man. That's not what I wanted. Hmm. So I'm 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 suspicious that I've made an error somewhere. And I don't know exactly where at the moment. Let me show you why I think that there might be an error. Yep. That goes back to our derivation, going back to you know, the parametric approach. So we calculate dy dx by taking dy d, you know, dy d theta divided by dx d theta. So I was using that in this specific case. Yeah. 
Oh, you did it a different way, and you also got two tangent thetas. Maybe, maybe I'm just, uh, maybe it's just my interpretation at the end, and I need, need help with my interpretation. Let's, let's work out, look at it. So the reason, what I was expecting, right? What is this, what is this curve? What is it? So this is, you know, the first order of business in studying polar coordinates is to be able to convert from polar, from like the polar form to Cartesian form and back again, right? So I started us with polar form. Can you tell me the Cartesian form of this curve? What did you say? Y equals x squared, right? So dy dx equal to? 2x, right? So that allegedly should be, oh, not 2r. Uh, what, what, what was x here? Oh. So. But x is, that should be 2r cosine theta also, yeah? So I was thinking that should be 2, what was my r? Tangent theta, secant theta, cosine theta, which seems to me should be, you know, 2 tangent theta. So it's very bothersome to me that we didn't get, we got this division by secant squared theta. There's a mystery here I don't understand at the moment. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not sure what to tell you about that. We, we better go on. I'll have to resolve this after class, okay? Whatever the, the cause is for this mystery, there's, there's something I don't, something I'm not appreciating at the moment. I'll have to show other professors this and see if they can shake me loose of my ignorance. Let us party like it is 99.56. I mean, we forgot yesterday, right? So this makes up. <laughs> right? Okay, so <clears throat> I'm sorry about this. This is very bothersome to me that, because it shouldn't matter. Like calculating the slope in x and y versus calculating the slope in r and theta, we should come to the same agreement once we, once we run through the dictionary of how to get from one to the other, right? That dictionary being what? So what's the dictionary between, between worlds, so to speak? Uh, we have x equals to r cosine theta. We have y equals to r sine theta. We have x squared plus y squared equals to r squared, often helpful. We have um, tangent theta is equal to y over x. We have theta is equal to inverse tangent of y over x. But this has strings attached. Context. What's the context in which this makes sense? Where is, where is the in theta actually the inverse tangent of y over x? Let me, say that, let me say this a different way. If you calculate the inverse tangent of a number, what kind of angle are you going to get? This is an element of, by construction, minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, right? So clearly that's not a universal formula because the, you know, the standard angle can be any number of things beyond that rather limited scope of minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So this formula, theta is equal to inverse tangent of y over x, is really only good in quadrants 1 and 4, and supposing that we're looking for a standard angle in that range, right? See, what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is there's a subtlety here we have to face on certain questions, which is, this is theta equals to 0, right? This is theta equals to pi over 2, right? But geometrically, that's also theta equals to what? 2 pi, right? And this is also what? What do you got? Uh, 5 pi over 2? Right? And it's so much worse than that, right? Because it's also minus 3 pi over 2 up here, right? Because you can subtract, four, subtract 2 pi, or you could go to 4 pi or 6 pi or minus 2 pi, right? Geometrically, theta is the same. Let's, let's, let's say this way, geometrically. is geometrically equivalent to theta plus 2 pi k, where k in the integers. And so we're always, 
We have to be cognizant of this issue. All right. <clears throat> All right. This would have been such a nice example if it worked out, yeah? Anyway. Oh, secant squared plus tangent squared is not one. Secant squared plus tangent squared theta is not one. <laughs> All right. It, so, so if you don't simplify secant squared plus tangent squared to one, but you actually use trigonometry as it's supposed to be done, man, I, I, sold, I sold all you guys on that, didn't I? Hey. It, it does, so if you do correct trigonometry, it works out to two tangent theta. Okay, thank you for finding that for me before I went to the other professors with this. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> Good. Whew. Well, I prefer that kind of mistake to the other kinds I was thinking about. So, all right. Thank you. <clears throat> let's see here. Let's let's do another one of these um, algebraic ones. Then I'll get back to the the, the method for graphing. Let's see here. Suppose we had x squared plus 4x. Um, plus 5. Um, let's see, 4 x, x squared plus 4x equal to 0. Let's see if you can find the polar form of that. And, and, and what is it? Or, or do I have, I don't have enough yet, I'm sorry. Um, see if we can find, what, what is that graphically? And also let's find a polar description of it. Let's see here, so a um, couple different things. This takes us back to the start of the course where I reminded you about a little bit about conic sections and completing the square and stuff, right? So this looks to me like x minus 2 squared, or plus 2 squared rather, um, plus y squared equal to 4, right? So I can tell from the Cartesian description of this that it's a circle, radius what? radius 2, centered at minus 2, 0, right? So that's a picture of it, roughly speaking, right? Great. So we've, we've, I, I find it convenient, in fact, nice to graph this with Cartesian variables, right? But we still might have a question, you know, what's, how do you formulate this in terms of polar coordinates, all right? So how would I do that? I would say to find the polar coordinates, I use my dictionary, right? My x is what? Um, x squared is r squared cosine squared theta plus 4r cosine theta plus r squared sine squared theta equal to 0. Um, Huh. Oh, look at that. So what can we do with this and this? Right? I mean, there are other things we know here, right? We know cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. <laughs> we know that 1 plus tangent squared theta <laughs> equal to secant squared theta, uh, apparently. <laughs> well, I know it now. Um, I didn't know it 10 minutes ago, apparently. Not a good sign, really, for today, by the way, folks. Um, R squared, for me, plus 4R cosine theta equal to 0. Can I solve for R? R. Um, I would factor out an R. 
So if you have a product of things equal to zero, that means what? These are real numbers, right? So if your product of things equal to zero, it means that one or the other of them is zero, right? So this says that r is equal to zero, or r plus four, r, r plus four cosine theta is equal to zero, right? So r equals to zero, that's easy enough to understand. That is here, right? That's the origin. And this one is um, minus 4 cosine theta. So basically, the equation r equals minus 4 cosine theta is a circle with radius 2 centered at minus 2, 0. Think about this. I could have started this problem with the boxed equation and asked you what it was, right? That's a different way to ask this problem, to explore this math. I start you here, and I ask you, what is this graphically? All right? If I did something like that, then the method of polar graphing might be the appropriate technique. Or, or we could use algebra. Uh, algebra, listen to me. Example three. Um, let's, let's try something similar but different. Um, what if we had r equals to 2 sine theta? How would you deal with that? How would you graph this? The way I would graph this is to use algebra paired with Cartesian knowledge. So in particular, I would take this, I would multiply by r. That gives me r squared is equal to 2r sine theta, right? Now r squared, I know what that is. That's x squared plus y squared. On the other side, I've got 2y. Right? And I, I know enough to know that this is going to be nice if I complete the square. So therefore, this is a circle, radius 1, centered where? It's centered at 0, 1. Now, if you don't have this algebraic insight, then what do you do? You know, what do you do if you, if you can't just work it out by the dictionary and identify it back with some other Cartesian curve that you already know and love? Then you might have to use the method for plotting a polar graph, right? And there really are two methods. The first and most important method to know in the wild is to know your favorite computer algebra system, right? Like Desmos or something, and just throw it in there and see what it looks like, right? But we don't have open book, open computer tests in here, so we have to understand things, you know, by direct manipulation of basic functions. And so here is my <coughs> example four. What if instead of having, what if instead of having sine theta there, I have r equals to um, you know, sine of, well, let's say 3 theta. Oh, I guess I should go with 2 theta for the sake of time here. I want to hurry it. Did I already do this example? Okay. So the, 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 the method for plotting a polar graph is essentially this. Step one, plot r equals to f of theta in um, theta r plot to translate 1 into curve in xy plane. It's a two-step process. I like to use color coding to keep myself straight. So r equals to 2 sine theta. And I personally like to start going from angle zero, but that's not written in stone. I mean, you can, you could sometimes, if you're, if you're doing like a cosine theta, it's often convenient to start a little bit before zero to get the full lobe of the cosine, yeah? We did, we did do sine two theta, all right. Let's do three theta then. Oh, tell you what, we'll make it, we'll make it more interesting. 
we'll do sine 2 theta um, plus 1. That actually changes the story quite a bit. So this, um, basic, what's the smallest this can be? Can't do math. Five pi over four. So sine of two theta plus one. What 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 are enveloping curves? What's an enveloping curve? Guess no. So there, it's a pair of curves that if you put it above and below your, your graph, the graph always fits between them, and just kind of barely so. So to me, the obvious enveloping curves here are just the lines well, y0, uh, right, and, and 2. See, because that's, that's the, the largest and smallest this can be, right? Because sine theta is at its smallest minus 1. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0. And the largest is 1 plus 1, which is 2. Uh-oh. I'm almost out of time. So this starts out at 1. And by the time it gets to pi over 4, it's at 2. Right? Um, it's at 2. And then it's back to 0 at pi over 2. And at pi, it's, it's, it's at 1 again. Right? Did I do that right? Why is my pi over 4? My pi over 4 is huge. Huge. Look at that. Goodness gracious. What is wrong with me? Many, many things. But let's see here. Let's try this again. Pi over 4. I can fix this like this. There we go. All right. So it starts out at 1. At pi over 4, it's 1. At pi over 2, it's 0. At pi, it's 0. At 5 pi over 4, um, what happens? It is 5 pi over 2, which is, I think, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Let me just graph. Oh. My scale is all wonky. I can't, look, I can't even plot a, I can't even plot a stupid sine 2 theta plus 1 today. I should just I should just stay at home. All right. That's how you do this. This is this is r equals to one. So this is pi. This is two pi. That's probably more than I need. So if we look at it, so this is Where's this? Where's, where does it come back to zero here? Minus pi over two, right? And where, where is this? Where is this zero here? That's pi over two, right? No, no, it should be th three pi over two. 3 pi over 4. Oh, I, I should just forget it. It's not worth it. You don't, want, you don't want to learn anything from me today. Let me just give you back your test. You can turn it off. I got, I got your test. <clears throat> yeah, it's graded. 